Is that Brandon Vol? Brandon Vol in chat. The Brandon. The Brandon Vol. Myth man, Sub- myth legend. Subscriber and moderator of the Dungeon Bros live streams. Yes, indeed. That one. That one in particular. That we pay him with an occasional meal when we happen to be at a convention. Because we're benevolent gods. We're wow. That is <laughs> that is a very high, um, indeed, very high bar for us to to leave ourselves in. Um, but before we started recording, we we were doing a. a uh, a Bo Burnham reference yes. in 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 chanting his song lyrics back to one another, and he deleted his social media like a month ago. Yeah, and everyone was like, "Ooh, is this going to lead into? Is this going to lead into a some kind of horrifying allegations? B a new album? Or C has he finally lost it and offed himself? And uh, we don't know. Still, no. he's just been silent on everything." He's been bow burning. He's been bow slow burning. In oh, yeah. <laughs> bow slow burning it. That's that's wild. That is wild. Um, we got a lot to talk about. There with if if you like the Dungeon Bros podcast. The, sorry, good God Almighty! It's been it's been months. It's been months. I don't know why I just did that. The Duels and Mana Dorks podcast. If you listen to the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast specifically for the uh, the D and D aspect of it i apologize but, but if you uh, listen to for the duels and the dorks part of it yeah now we got what well, today this is ooh, we got a lot we so match chicago just happened yes and they dropped a lot of information and of course we're going to get into all we we can't cover everything it's a it's it's an insurmountable amount of information it is that we could just spew at you for hours we got some fallout deck stuff Outlaws of Thunder Junction, Modern Horizons 3, Assassin's Creed, and Bloomborough information to go over. Way too much to cover in a reasonable amount of time. So yeah. we're not. We're going to talk about the things that we care about. In an unreasonable amount of time. Yes, but... Five minutes. Of course. Of course. Well, that, that's... Right, start talking faster. God damn, we only have five minutes. Go, go, go. No, I'm sick. I don't want to... Yeah, you sound gross. Yeah, thanks for doing that into the mic. <sighs> You're welcome. That'll be the last time I do that on purpose. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to mute when I have to do gross, sickly things. Um, but also, I hope that it helps create a more sultry tone to my voice. With your raspy and... End. With my deep and raspy tones. I There's there's some people that are very enjoying that, and oh, well. that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, uh, this episode, episode 61 of the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast, is sponsored by Leonardo da Vinci himself, brought to life in the upcoming Assassin's Creed universes beyond. Do you want to be a literal human historical figure that is canonically stronger than a Spartan warrior, a grizzly bear, a Warhammer 40k space marine, and a slightly smaller than average Hydra? (laughs) Then the da Vinci's guide to getting fucking jacked beyond belief is the book for you. Comes with three free servings of Last Supper protein powder, Mona Lisa pre-workout, and a vial of the Vertuvian Man human growth hormone. Check the link in the description for more info. Uh, For those of you that don't get that bit, Assassin's Creed has a card of Leonardo da Vinci where he's a 3-3. Yeah. Which... The Grizzly Bear card, 2-2. Two, two. Space Marine, 2-2. Two, two. It's a 2-2's two, joke. Versus Leonardo, literal human being. <laughs> literal man that existed at one point in history, Leonardo da Vinci. The 3-3. Three, three. The 3-3. Three, three. Who has something to do with thopters. Really? Yeah. I, I actually didn't read the card description. I was mostly just looking at the memes. Yeah. Well, I'm being completely honest. Well, we'll glance at that when we get there. Yeah. Thank you, Leonardo, for sponsoring this episode of the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast. We haven't even gotten into the spiel. No, no. This is, of course, the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast, a D&D and Magic the Gathering podcast. I am Connor. And I am Sam. And we are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. And we have, an, we have like a little bonus podcast series that we've been, yeah. that we've re- resurrected from the grave. We used to do some interviews with some fellow TikTok friends, and we've started doing that again, only this time it's properly branded yes bonus action bonus action a duels and manador supplement podcast we talked uh several weeks ago with randy of the forged realms he he hooked us up at gen con for uh some play test stuff that we really appreciated uh our friend that we stayed with at gen con bearded gm we talked to him that got a little bit unhinged <laughs> It was it was a little something, and uh, the audio problem ridden uh, but fantastic conversation with Ivy, yes. the CEO and founder of the Crit Awards, uh, which are going into their second year. Uh, the Crit Awards is a uh, creator recognition and tabletop RPGs award show that uh, 
had their first annual showing last Gen Con, and we wanted to talk to her about the process of putting that up, and it, it's a wonderful conversation. Her side sounds great. Yeah, it does, absolutely. Yeah, no, we... Oh, we sound like we're, like, way back there. Yeah, we sound, we sound like... Um, if you're playing like Xbox 360 Halo, yeah, and you got you got like the little squeaker kid on your team, and he's like eating the microphone on his headset, that's what we sound like. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead and listen to that. You'll learn a lot about the Crit Awards uh, and uh, all the news. There's a new Ooh. little special preview little, that little, uh, we got a dungeon a Dungeon Bros Duels and Mana Dorks exclusive information for the second showing, and we would. Uh, we're we're looking to see if we can have her on again when they have like uh, actual nominees for yeah. the categories for this year, which would be a pretty fun time. Also, we're gonna go through every week as we as we just kind of roll into this. Sam, what have you been playing for the last couple of weeks? Well, so uh, with the new fall, have you, have you been hell diving? I have been hell diving. Yes, okay. I've been enjoying hell divers. Uh, I I was lucky enough to get in when it dropped so i had about a week of play two weeks of play before uh the servers were absolutely fucked apparently they're better now they're better now um but yeah there was a there was a span of time where people just their the queues were so long because the servers were overwhelmed because yeah it's an indie game it's not a it's not a first party game let's let's they don't they didn't have the support they the they're, they are not a first party game they're like they're like in a second party relationship with sony and for those of you that don't know, first party is owned by Sony. Second party isn't... Actually, it wouldn't even technically be second party because it is on PC. Yes. So, <clears throat> but excuse you. I know, right? I wasn't expecting that. Excuse you. Excuse you. But yeah. I, I'm the one that's supposed to be coughing into the microphone today. You are. Well, you're not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be, but I'm going to be probably at some point. Or at the very least, I'm going to do one of these where I where I, where I I mute it. And now I'm on your mic. <laughs> and then I do something like that. That'll that'll probably happen at some point. Anyway, uh, but I don't know if you've heard, uh, but there was something going around recently where uh, a section of the Helldivers community has decided to put some rules into place. Oh God! Now noted, Helldivers is not a competitive game. It is a it is a is a casual co op sort of idea. I mean, speak for yourself. Friendly fire being on means all bets are then off. Yeah, but you don't get any bonuses for killing your friends. <laughs> I mean, social bonuses. Social bonuses. But, uh, yeah, there was a thing going around Twitter recently where uh, there were players demanding that if you're not running meta loadouts, which, like, yeah, not everything is, you know, amazingly strong in that game. But some things are particularly good. And basically it was like, if you're not running meta loadouts and you're playing with, you're playing oh, not private, uh, then we're going to kick you. That seems a little bit unnecessary. Yeah. It was like, if you're not running this gun and this and one of these two backups, and if you're not using the best stratagems, which are like your special mega throwables, then we're going to kick you. Now, at a certain point, I, I, at a certain point, I get that simply because like how the game is structured to my understanding. I haven't played it. You have like the bug ridden infested worlds and then you got the robot infested mm -hmm. worlds and the robot infested worlds are a fucking bitch. Yeah, they're a lot harder because both both worlds, you're fighting hordes of enemies and giant enemies at the same time. Uh, with the robot ones, there are a lot of ranged. Mm. They're all, like, attacking you from a long distance, and uh, whereas the bugs, it's all up close. Okay. So I would imagine for the harder ones, it's like, hey, if you're not doing the best stuff and you're kind of in a throwing thing, then we're going to get rid of you. But that's also one step before a couple steps before what they're getting to yeah sounds yeah yeah so but sorry for hell diving uh, sorry for hell diving you remember that yeah but sorry for party, party. rock yeah because they made because they made the party rock anthem and it became so big and then their their entire album was sorry for party rocking because people were getting annoyed with the song <laughs> anyway <laughs> other than that i've been i picked up fallout 4 to start playing that uh before fallout decks come out mm. um because i think right now my plan is to meet up with a couple of our friends who are also real into fallout grab the decks and just do a little, oh, little pre-con pod yeah that'll be fun that'll be fun i like a pre-con pod okay. you don't have to think about it you just buy the decks i kind of i kind of am feeling compelled to do that with um oh god i can't remember there was one of them where i was like i could be down for that 
Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I literally don't remember which set I was I was thinking about with this. Oh, Bloomborough. Because Bloomborough. That makes sense. The only one you're actually interested in for well, the next several. Well, Bloomborough because it's going to be right at Gen Con. Also true. It's going to be releasing right before Gen Con, so, so that'll that, probably... I mean, yeah, there'll be an event, and we'll, we usually like to do those events just because oh, yeah. they're easy. Oh, yeah. It's something to do. But yeah, what have you been playing? Oh, God. Persona 3 Reload. Of course. And almost almost exclusively Persona 3 Reload. Um I'm getting close to I'm getting close to the end. There's a lot of spoilers happening at mm. this point of uh and by spoilers I mean just story things that I don't want to talk about because of spoilers. Uh it's depressing as shit. <laughs> it's really sad. Well like several characters have seemingly died. I think one of them's gonna end up coming back and then having to be killed again, but that's a whole other thing. It's uh also it's the game where they all summon their personas by shooting themselves in the head. Yeah. So that's a whole that's the whole thing. Uh, still working on on scheduling up the uh, Call of the Nether Deep campaign. Haven't made any new decks. Made some upgrades with Outlaws of Thunder. Or, no, God, not Outlaws. <laughs> Jesus Christ, murders at Karlov murders Manor. Murders at Karlov Manor. Yeah. Markov, Markov's at, at Karlov Manor. Um, doing some upgrades there. But. Sorry for Karloven. Anyway, sorry for Karloven. Anyway, uh, we're going to get into the upcoming releases. Sam will cover that in a second. But, of course, you can get the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast every other week. We record live on TikTok on Tuesdays around noon Eastern time. And uh, you can get the podcast the following day, 1230 on Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, all that kind of stuff. The links for all of those are in the Beacons link in the bio. You can listen to it on there's a whole bunch of other services that aren't just the big ones that everyone uses. There's a lot of like little podcasting services, yeah. which was very easy in the back end to hit click. And then it was enabled. So we actually have a lot of people that listen on some random podcast service. Like it's like 30% of our podcast downloads are from this random ass podcast service ass podcast from this random podcast service that I don't even remember the name of, but that's very hilarious. But we got the upcoming releases for D&D and Magic the Gathering, and a lot of these are updated with like actual specific dates. Yeah, finally. so we'll start with D&D. Uh, in May, May 21st, we'll have Vecna, Eve of Ruin, the high-level campaign. Uh, up to level 20, the first 20. one that's ever been printed for that, I think. Yeah. Uh, then we have not a campaign book, but the making of original D&D, 1970-1977, uh, which is a... a a, t- a tabletop it's, or a it's coffee like, table like historical yeah. book. Yeah, so it's one of those you just have out for people to like peruse. Through. Yeah, like, I don't. I doubt any. I doubt many people are going to be reading it. Uh, that comes out June eighth. We have Quest for the Inf- yeah, Quest from the Infinite Staircase, which is this year's anthology book. It'll be coming out July sixteenth, and then we have the one D and D core book release dates. The Player's Handbook will be coming September 17th this year. The Dungeon Master's Guide will be coming on November 12th of this year. And the Monster Manual will be dropping on February 18th of next year, 2025. For Magic the Gathering. Oh boy. Oh boy. We ball. So we have the last time we'll be mentioning you, The Murders of Karlov Manor has already been out uh, fully in release. The Fallout decks, which we'll be talking about in a hot second probably, will be March 8th of this year. Uh, we have the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. The pre-release of that will be April 12th, and the full release will be April 19th. Modern Horizons 3, uh, the mis- the mis- no modern, modern Modern Commander Modern Commander 3. <laughs> that pre-release will begin June 7th, and with the full release on June 14th. The Assassin's Creed Universes Beyond will be on July 5th. Uh, the Bloomborough pre-release will start July 26th with a full release on August 2nd, and Duskborn House of Horrors is the only one we don't have a lot of information about yet, but that will be releasing in Q4. So the most... We've got a ton of Magic the Gathering things to cover. MagicCon Chicago just happened, and they drop, as they always do, a ton of information Mm -hmm. for Magic the Gathering releases. Uh, First, we're going to hit the closest to release, which is the Fallout commander decks uh these decks are not necessarily things that i'm particularly excited for i'm not really a fallout guy um i like some of the mechanics that are happening with some of these cards but um we basically have had every, we've basically been shown every single card yes yeah, so i believe point. they're in full release or um, full spoiler yeah. yeah and at magic con chicago you could buy the collector boosters for uh the fallout 
cards. You can get them only as commander decks or collector boosters, uh, much like you could with uh, Doctor Who, yes. the commander decks. And then the collector boosters are just cards from the commander decks with extended art and search foil and all that. Sam, this is more your thing, so do you have any... Do you have any cards in particular you want to go over or talk about? I mean, we've been looking at a lot of the cards, especially the face commanders, for, for a while now. Um, I think more of the, the big ones that are going to be interesting are uh, the deck helmed by Dr. Madison Lee with the backup Liberty Primary Charge, which is going to be an energy deck. Uh, it's the first energy stuff we've seen since Kaladesh. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people have been jonesing for a hot minute for a energy commander like this. Well, it's it's it hasn't really had a, like a proper like build around commander yeah. until now, um, and just the versatility of Doctor Madison Lee in general is going to be very good. Uh, the Liberty Prime recharged. I mean, that's it's a five mana eight eight with vigilance, trample, and haste that then benefits from energy counters like and sacking some uh, sacking. Yeah, some artifact sack. Uh, other than that, we have uh, the- again, again. I would want. I want to reiterate here: a five mana eight eight with vigilance, trample, and haste. Yeah, as your commander, that's a very good spot to start. Carry on. I will say <laughs> you can't attack or block uh, if uh, when it, whenever Liberty Prime attacks or blocks, sacrifice it unless you pay two uh, energy. Which yeah, there's a lot you can you can work around, especially when you're in. Uh, white and blue mm. bounce and things like that absolutely uh bounce well yeah and getting all those in it. so anyway uh the other ones we have of course are the uh naya deck which is going to focus on artifacts and enchantments uh quip, so artifact equipment and aura enchantments and i will say this is probably the one i've mo- been most interested in uh one of the cards that i've been looking to build around is three dogs uh Gal- galaxy news rave i'll find it we'll find it but We've it's it's not like we've been hurting for uh, enchantment and That's equipment commanders true. for a while. I will say that color combination of Naya is a is a pretty good one to have. Um, obviously, we just had we had the enchantment commander from uh, Commander Masters with the Nikthea Hand of Erebos, but that one's built more around sagas and permanents that are non aura non aura enchantment permanents. Um, I'm always I've always been a big fan of the aura enchantment as a card type i am as well i've i mean obviously my ivy gleeful spell thief is built a lot around aura enchantments and i get a lot of people don't like to run them because you get two for one if the creature gets destroyed yeah here we go three dog galaxy news dj one red white uh human bard whenever you attack you may pay two and sacrifice an aura attached to three dog galaxy news dj when you sacrifice an aura this way for each other attacking creature you control create a token that's a copy of that aura attached to that creature Permanently. Yep, permanently. Hmm. So. I'll allow it. There are some ridiculous auras you can get out there in red and white. I think all that glitters, suddenly everything you have all glitters. And they're token, and they're tokens, so they're you're tokens. creating more, you're creating more enchantments that then are buffing the all that, all that glitters, which by the way, that card, all that glitters, is a reference to the Lord of the Rings. Did you know that? Not all that glitters is gold. It's a part of the part of the prophecy mm. for the return of the king and uh, the ring of bear here and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's also mentioned in uh, Smash Mouth's. Uh, yeah, all yeah, all that glitter. Well, actually, that's the opposite. That says all that glitters is gold, yeah. and only shooting stars break the mold. Anyway, um, but that's the one I want. The to best play part out. of uh, the Digimon movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, childhood. I don't have a lot to say about the the Fallout decks. Yeah. Probably not going to be getting very many cards. Obviously, there's going to be some pretty decent reprints uh, with some new art, which is going to help Excitingly, lower the price of some of this. But They are finishing a 20-year-old land cycle in this, which are, oh. the, which are the Signet Lands. Oh. The pay one. It's going to be the a- uh, enemy colored Signet Lands. So. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. So that's that's uh, that's exciting. Um, so there we go. Yeah. So virident, viridescent bog, one tap add, green black, uh, and they're doing the five color cycle of enemy lands for that. All right, well we'll, we'll take that. All right, uh, we'll, but we'll take that. That being said, we've been looking at these cards for a while. I think overall the Fallout decks are going to be more powerful and well put together. 
than the Doctor Who, the last yeah. universes beyond we have. Absolutely. And I think if we want to talk game design for just a hot second, that's because um, like this and Warhammer, they're games. They're yeah. already games. So we're just taking already good, successful mechanics we know and putting them into Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Whereas Doctor Who is kind of like, hey, look at your favorite character and something they did once. Yeah, here's some lore. Yeah. You want lore? You want some story in your cards? Well, that's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously the Lord of the Rings worked really well because even though it is just it's, it's lore... It's also like, hey, this is already fantasy, and we already know what fantasy looks well, like in the game mechanics. Well, that's that's the thing, is that Lord of the Rings is fantasy. Mm-hmm. It is the fantasy. It, when you think of fantasy, Lord of the Rings is the creator of that. Like, it, Magic the Gathering planes spawned from it. D&D spawned from it. Like, countless, countless things spawned from Lord of the Rings. So that Lord of the Rings can kind of fit in for a lot of games Mm -hmm. and just kind of slot in very nicely just because so many things came from it. It's like going back to your creator. It's the the default of of thoughts of how orcs and elves and dwarves work. Exactly. Exactly. Do you have, do you have anything else you want to go over? No, let's, uh, I mean, Vats, Vats we've talked about before. It's a really cool card, but that was just on screen. Choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness. Destroy all creatures, uh, chosen creatures. Super cool. Anyway. Split seconds. Two black black instant speed. What in the hell? We got a gift? Uh, yeah, it looks like my secret account is gifting us currently. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Ruining the podcast. That was weird. I have not had I have not had sound come from my phone during the live in a while. That's that's for That's those of you something. who are in the live, uh, thank you for hanging out. Thank you. For, we appreciate Sydney's uh, contributions, but we also like likes and shares. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll answer them at the end of the podcast. Yes. But yes. that end is not near. For near no. is the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Outlaws of Thunder Junction is the next regular magic set release. Uh, it will be coming out, as we previously mentioned, on... Uh, pre-release April 12th, release April 19th. It's going to have a pre-release kit, play and collector boosters, commander decks, bundles. Uh, it's got, who commit crimes, ride a cowboy. Oko is is the face planeswalker yeah. of this car, of, of this entire set. And uh, he's sexy, but also kind of not very powerful because they're scared of making him too powerful like the last one. Um, got a static ability built around the uh, committing of crimes which we don't really know i think from what i've heard again we haven't seen any cards printed with the with the reminder text but committing crimes i believe has something to do with targeting your opponent or their stuff which i mean makes sense Uh, it's definitely going to be a set specific mechanic but um they very clearly when we're they were designing this new planeswalker plus one draw two if you've committed a crime discard a card otherwise discard two minus one to create a three three green elk creature token and then minus five uh, for each other non-land permanent you control, create a co- token that's a copy of that permanent. Um, starting loyalty of three. They clearly were like, let's not make Oko a problem again. <laughs> Oko has often been a problem. Yeah, Oko, known problem. But I will say the wanted poster alt art, the the alt frame that they have for this set, I like a lot more than we've been getting with like the uh, the file mm. that we got from Merge of Manor. I think that was called the invisible ink or something like that well the invisible ink was the ones that you could get from the collector boosters where in the foiling there was like text that would uh, go across that makes sense which is pretty cool uh i do want to point out one card from um from outlaws of thunder junction duelist of the mind this is for this is a card based around uh nathan oh gosh what's the name i can't read it nathan stewer who is the world champion of magic the gathering for this last year uh is a one and a blue for a star three human advisor with flying and vigilance power equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. And whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card and it triggers only once per turn. Um, and it could kill the fairy mastermind. Yeah. It could kill the fairy mastermind. Unless you've drawn no cards this turn, which would be a little bit strange. Uh, we haven't seen too many cards from outlaws yet. I will say, you you could talk about that, but I want to talk about the Sword of Wealth and Power, which will be in the Commander decks. Uh, three mana artifact equipment with equip two. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, has protection from instants and sorceries. Yeah. So, most interaction. 
Unless you're looking to, you know, if you got your destroy thing on when your creature enters. Yeah, and they didn't stop there either. No, they, they didn't. Di- they didn't. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you create a treasure token, and when you cast an instant or sorcery spell on this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copies. I want to note a couple of things here. Mm-hmm. One, next cast, instant or sorcery, copy the spell. Yes. You're... you're why, why do we why do we need to why do we need to copy any spell? Why did why is why can't it be limited a little bit? So you're gonna copy your your ten mana bombs. You're gonna copy your stupid ridiculous shit. Sure. Protection from all instants and sorceries. Fuck your swords to plowshares. Yeah. Fuck your generous gift. Fuck like beast within any of those. Yeah. Any black based removal of any kind. Your lightning bolt. I don't give a shit. Chaos Warp? Fuck you. Li- most run... Some of the most run removal in yeah. Commander decks you have protection from. So... It do Have we have we found the best sword of this and that? Who knows? Right now, yeah. <laughs> I would argue. I would say... Yeah, for the, for the most part, when it comes to that protection clause, because... Uh, there are, yeah, like I just mentioned, there are obviously plenty of removals on creatures. There's plenty of uh, enchantment style, you know, when this card enters battlefield, exile, culture, yeah. yeah. Or uh, removals. Yeah. Um, however, that is those are far less, yeah, run than the one mana, one mana, k- k- exile the creature and do something else. Those something yeah. else are in- inconsequential usually. Yeah. Source of Plash Air. Oh, you get, you get a couple life, but it's gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue Swords to Plowshire is probably one of, if not the most run removal. Oh, I'd, re- I'd reckon, yeah. In in Commander. So that, great card. You, I, I believe you would like to talk about our little lost boy here. Yeah, Fibblethip, lost on the range. Fibblethip just can't find his way. You know, first really he's can. just wandering around, around Ravnica, then he's on top of Borba Rigmos for some reason, and now he's on in Thunder Junction. With a with a cute little cowboy hat. Got a great little cowboy hat. He says he's a 1-1 one, one, it says, and it has Ward 2. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. Already great. Uh, the top card of your library has plot. What the fuck is plot? We've lost the plot. That's what I'll tell um, you. Is it like anime style plot? Like, does the top card do? Does the top card of your library now have big animated titties? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, the plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may play. You may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. I wonder if that has. Like, you know, a plot of land. My thought is either a plot of land or a plot, like, yeah, a scheme of some sort. So I imagine it's a scheme. Maybe. It's gotta be. Unless you can... What if what if, what if uh, plot is, like, inking cards in uh, in the Disney Lorcana, where it's just like, all right, whatever this is, is now a resource. Hmm. So what if now you can just play cards and then they say it loses the ability, you know, it loses creature types and it's just a land. That would be weird. That would... The, I... It's hard to judge how good that how good that mechanic will be because we don't know what it is. No, um, it seems like an alternate casting cost for sure. Which, if we know anything about like spectacle, yeah, or miracle, or any of those other alternative casting costs, they can they can be very powerful. Um, anyway, I don't really have. There's they haven't shown too many cards from Outlaws yet. Um, but we have we have seen some of the big ones and some fun little story things. We've seen the alternate frames. Uh, thought sees, of course, being reprinted. Good, love love a love a thought sees. Uh, I, I actually I actually don't. I think it's kind of an overrated card personally. You're playing a discard deck. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fair. Enough. I mean, every every card has a home. Every card has a home in a certain deck, but. This one is probably just kind of box standard. It seems like it's going to be just. Another regular magic set, which I, honestly I'm perfectly fine with. Yeah, I think that's been our our thing, uh, especially uh, since Eldrain is like, damn, Eldrain was it was it overly powerful? No, did it have a cool cards in it? Yeah, was it fun to play just because you didn't have to think about the over the the excessive price and uh, hype around it? Yes, had some great reprints in it too. Absolutely, with the uh, it had a bonus sheet. Love a bonus sheet. The enchanting tales I think was a really good idea to do, and I like the art on them as well. But that's all that I have for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Modern Horizons 3. Or as I would like to call it, uh, Modern Commander 3? I guess so, yeah. So, 
First of all, pre-release kits. I feel like that's a little weird for a straight to modern set, but yeah. I digress. It's going to have play and collector boosters, commander decks, collector's edition commander decks, a bundle, and notably, this is the only set that they've announced that said it's going to have a gift bundle. Yeah. So far, which is also interesting. I think they, they clearly know the Modern Horizons set sell very very well yes um they they tend to have a lot more powerful cards reprinted um so there's a lot of value in these sets but the biggest thing is a lot of people are like why the fuck are we making commander decks yeah for the mo- the straight to modern set yeah we were i was listening to i think it was a little run or something else along those lines and they were saying modern horizons 2 and this was before last weekend's really announcement, but uh, Modern Horizons 2, a lot of people had criticisms of it for being, like, having a lot of reprints for commander sets, or, you know, commander staples, and not as many, you know, not as big of a focus as you would like to see on them for modern in a modern set. And this time, they've just thrown all, uh, they've just thrown all underhandedness out the, ta- out the window and said, hey... Commander players, we know how you like to spend money. Yeah, well, you you pulled up this quote from Mark Rosewater Mm -hmm. about the naming of the set in general, saying, quote, I think there is consistency. Commander decks accompany products all the time, but but have a different legality than the product line it accompanies. Why should the Modern Horizons accompanying decks be modern legal when the standard accompanying decks aren't standard legal? And goes on to a whole bunch of... it. Quote, I agree. Modern Horizons is an inappropriate name for the set. End quote. Why Why would they go out of their way to create a modern, a straight to modern, specifically for the format of modern set, and name it that, when it, that's not what the set is? It's mm-hmm. the same. It's the same mentality of commander masters in my mind like yeah it's a lot of commander reprints but they held back a lot yeah and it's not re- like they made a lot of new cards that aren't really great they it was, a, it was in a lot of ways it was a draft set yeah <laughs> you know and obviously the masters moniker they've been able to use they want i'm sure they they're like we're reprinting a lot of valuable things we're creating a lot of valuable good game pieces mm-hmm. that are going to be here so we want to name it something that people are going to buy. Yeah. There's other sets that would make more sense. I, th- why not have this be a master set? Here, uh, There's a sentiment that I was hearing, you know, th- that I didn't get until recently, which was a lot of people don't like, a lot of commander players, older commander players, don't like when Wizards of the Coast started printing for commander. Mm-hmm. And I kind of start, I've started to realize what that means, where it's like, I, I like, don't get me wrong, obviously I like that commander decks are, are now printed a lot of the time, and especially in, in standard sets. Um, but like this, if we look at the if we look at the first look of the commander decks that they're offering, the um, we have a five color Eldrazi, we have a Jund Reanimator, I believe. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Ah, oh, there we are. So we have, yeah, we have a, the Graveyard Overdrive in Jund. We have the uh, Tricky Terrain, Ramp Lands, and Grow Value in Simic. Which apparently might have Helm of the Host in it, if you look at the art. The art definitely looks like it has Helm of the Host in it. Uh, creative Energy for Jeskai, which is Energy Counters and Powerful Payoffs. And then the Eldrazi Incursion, uh, Start Small, Eldrazi Smash. Um, <clears throat> also, notably, they list all five of the colors and the colorless symbol, implying that they're like, this is like a, a six-color deck. Because when you think about it, colorless is a color. Color, Yeah. <clears throat> but l- like that, uh, specifically the Jund one, it's like, okay, Graveyard Overdrive. It almost feels like you're like, hey, we want you to, we want you to make, we want you to be playing, you know, buying this deck. So if you have any other Jund re- reanimator deck, well, now now longer don't, no, you don't, you don't need a, you don't need it anymore. You just play this one. Where I'm, I like the fact that it's like, okay, if you would not include these decks and just put the cards in the set anyway, I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people would still buy it because you saw, hey, they're reprinting this really powerful card. Yeah. I'd love that in my Jund reanimator deck. That that's that I think comes down to just a disconnect between 
current players and players that have been playing for a long time and newer players where a newer player isn't going to take the time to make a 100 card singleton deck true but i think if they you know they put it in a a set that had a theme and said hey here's a jundry animator deck as opposed to saying this is the ultimate jundry animator deck that's why we've printed it in the collector's edition which costs way too much money it's 150 dollars. they've priced it at the So all of the commander decks are going to have their collector's edition versions, which are going to have a bunch of alt art and a bunch of special treatments of cards. And they're pricing it and treating it in a way that they would treat their secret lair commander decks, um, which have all been proven. All of the secret lair commander decks have sold very quickly, have been fairly well received in terms of design and play, Mm -hmm. uh, and all can be sold on the secondary market for a lot of money. And we know that they can because people are doing that with the dogs and cats one they did recently. Yeah. We, Scout I mean, the hell out of it. It's reached the point where I'm like, all right, well, buy four of them and then sell three of them and you basically got one of them for free. Like, that that's, that's a whole other issue of print to demand versus make a print and then sell until you're out. Mm-hmm. But... I think I, I, I want to push back a little bit on that because these kinds of decks are for convenience and they're creating a product where they can sell you valuable reprints above their cost. Like if you like if you were to piecemeal out a lot of these decks, the value of the cards are going to be much higher than the price of the deck. So you get good value, but you're also like, oh, I really want these five cards mm-hmm. that are being reprinted in here. And you could just buy those five cards for less than the price of the deck. Right. But they're all reprinted in one thing, and you get all these other pieces that you weren't really needing, but it's a whole it's a way for it's just a way for them to produce more, more yeah. money and put more of these cards into circulation, which I don't really see as a bad thing. I think that from a business perspective, yeah. I, I agree. Even from a consumer perspective, I don't see that as a bad thing. What I see it as is though the, I mean, we're talking about it right now. Is is why are, why are these commander decks in a modern set? Um, and in fact, your note is why the fuck do we have commander decks in the modern set? Yeah, um, it's silly. It's silly. So don't make it a modern set. If they named the set differently, then people would be totally thrilled by it. I think that's what I think we've had. You know, if it we've was talked a triple about, masters. You know, <laughs> like. I think we had that same that same kind of realization when they did the 30th anniversary proxies, mm. where it's like, yeah, you sold, you tried to sell this to us as like, oh, it's a it's a celebration of our 30th. No, nah, man, it's a it's a whales it's a whales uh, collector item. collector item like, and I think that's the I think that's the same sentiment here that I have is like, yeah, I agree with you. The re, the branding is off, and trying yeah, well. I see I see Modern Horizons 3 as it's going to be a beneficial thing to wizards, it's going to be a beneficial thing to magic, it's going to be a beneficial thing to the community. Like they they're reprinting very powerful cards, which means the prices are going to go down. We're they're getting we're going. getting a reprint of the Allied Fetchlands, possibly even in the commander decks. Possibly. Just included in. And even even the Commander Masters Commander decks, there was a there was a decent period of time where you could get them for around the same that you can get most Commander decks, and obviously some of them spike a lot higher yeah. later once the supply is a bit more limited. Um, and right now, those Collector Edition Commander decks are going for the same rate that their Special Edition Secret Lair Commander decks go for. I don't see a problem. They're they're even doing a new to modern reprint bonus sheet. Uh, so far, they've shown things like uh, Laelia, Blade Reforged, and Priest of Titania. Uh, Priest of Titania, I know off the top of my head, it taps for green for every color, uh, for every oh. creature that you have. Oh, okay. So it's a massive mana dork. But I believe it's even on yeah this previewed page. on here. If we go there, it yeah, is. here for every elf you control. Yeah, oh, for every elf you control. Um, but they're 
they're re- they're making a specific bonus sheet for modern for new to modern cards, which is interesting because previously bonus sheets were printed so that uh, cards wouldn't get into certain format circulations and were mostly for commander. So that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, and they're making a lot of like we haven't even we haven't even talked about the big the big mama, brand new Emrakul. Emrakul, the world anew. Oh boy, I zoomed in too much. <laughs> Go one out. Emrakul, the world anew. 12 mana, 12, 12 Eldrazi. 12 colorless mana. Yes. When you cast the spell, gain control of all creatures, target player controls. Flying, protection from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn. When Emrakul, the world anew, leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all creatures you control. Madness, pay six colorless mana. It's also going to have collector serialized versions of course but like we're getting we're getting a new eldrazi people fucking drool over themselves for eldrazi's we're getting some pretty interestingly designed uncommons and rares that are going to be more readily available allied fetch like is it weird that it's a modern horizon set with a lot of commander focus in it yeah but at the end of the day i think the set's going to be a positive thing and it's going to be opened to high hell and a lot of these cards are going to go down in price i see this as a win 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 even if you don't open the set itself it's possible i mean we also see cards we see what the you know cards some cards obviously will forever retain their value just because how powerful they are oh yeah see jeweled lotus reprint in commander masters uh went down like 10 bucks then immediately went up 20 (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that Modern Horizons is coming out in uh, is coming out in June uh, with full release on June fourteenth. June seventh pre release, which I do think it's interesting that they have pre release kits. But pre release kits are going to be a great way to get these cards. We love pre release kits around here. They they're a great way to get new cards. Um, only set with a gift bundle. It's been a hot second since we've had a set with a gift bundle. Mm, yeah. I'm not too surprised. This set's going to sell ludicrously. Luda. Ludicrously well. I do also... I, I got one more thing before we oh, throw yeah. it away. A Johnny. Nakato Pariah. I like cats. I'm a big fan. You I have a cat. Fan. I'm a cat person. A Johnny Nakato Pariah. One in a white. One, two. Legendary cat warrior. When he enters the battlefield, you create... A 2-1 white cat warrior creature token. Right there. Two mana, two bodies, a 2-1 and a 1-2. Sorry. Yeah, a 2-1 and a 1-2. Yep. A 3-3 three, three for th- for two across two bodies. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. That's a good rate. Whenever one or more other cats you control die, you may exile a Johnny, return him to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. Flip him to a planeswalker, a Johnny Nakadal Avenger. Three starting loyalty. You plus two him to put a plus one plus one counter on each cat you control. Zero him to create another two one white cat warrior creature token. And when you do, if you control a red permanent other than a Johnny, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. Player, creature, mm-hmm. planeswalker, battle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, you, why you'd be targeting a battle. But, and then minus four each Opponent chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from any of the non-land permanents they control, and then sacrifice the rest. This is a two-mana creature Mm -hmm. that has value as a creature just entering the battlefield. Yeah. Well above cost. Because it's a creature, this can be a a Boros cat commander with a planeswalker on the backside that after one uptick, for one, for one, it entering the battlefield creates its own protection. You can zero it to create another body. Zero. Zero loyalty. Zero loyalty removal that creates a protective body. And then one uptick means you can safely use his ultimate and keep him around to just get rid of every, like most of everybody else's shit. Yeah. Um, that card is cracked. Big fan. Big, big fan. Also... We got the Planeswalker origin story for yeah. Johnny, so that's pretty cool. His pride denied him; his brother did not. Yes, the the creature on the front side, Planeswalker on the back, 
They haven't done that in a while. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Modern Horizons 3. Do you have anything else? And that's all I have to say about that. All right. Next, Assassin's Creed Universes Beyond. Yeah. Ooh, boy. I feel like every time we learn more about this set, the worse it gets. The card design is going to be whatever. Leonardo da Vinci is a big boy who's stronger than a bear, a 40k space marine, a Spartan warrior, and a Hydra. A small Hydra. Small Hydra. Small Hydra. A four mana Hydra. You've cut off a couple of its heads. Yeah. Play and collector boosters. It's going to have a bundle. It's going to have a starter kit, which will probably be the the most of value product in in the set. Would be I will mine. say we also like starter kits just because it's like they're usually pretty cheap. 20 bucks maybe? 20 bucks or less. I've, or I've less. Seen them, I've seen them for like 12. And then oftentimes because people don't buy them, the cards in them are really, you know, for at least a while, really valuable. Yeah, the the usually the face cards are foil and they're exclusive to the starter kits. Mm-hmm. Um, we're a fan. The play boosters for this set are actually called Beyond Boosters because they're not a regular booster pack. No, they're, they're not meant for drafting. There's seven cards. Because, you know, what we really loved, and by this I'm sarcastically saying that, is the epilogue boosters from Marriage to the Machines Aftermath. Those were five card booster packs. But beyond boosters, seven cards, one to four cards of rarity, rare or higher, three to five uncommons, zero to one lands, and then a traditional foil showcase mythic rare card in less than 1% of the booster packs. How many times have we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Yeah. The epilogue booster was a failure. Oh, by far. Like, Wizards of Coast did surveys, and yeah. Yeah, beyond anything else, that was so far behind uh, uh, their their quality value. Like, everybody was, shat on them. It was bad. It lost value almost immediately. We were able to get a, an entire booster box for $40, and even recently... Uh, the Tal- the professor of the Tolarian Community College did a booster box game with af- with the aftermath yeah. epilogue boosters because it was only forty dollars, and it's still not of value. No, no, there are there are a few cards that of course were very good, uh, some some former planeswalkers in that set, but then other than that, like uh, nothing. So there aren't going to be any commons. We're only going to have uncommons, rares, and mythics, which mm-hmm. are now simply going to be the co- the uncommons are effectively common. Yep. The rares are effectively uncommon, and the mythics are effectively rare. Yeah. So in, in less than 1% of, of boosters, you'll get a worthwhile card. Mm-hmm. Collector boosters, a little bit better in terms of card count of 10. You get two foil etch cards and six to seven traditional foil cards and then a combination of four to five cards of rarity rare or higher five uncommons and zero to one lands where you can get a serialized historic figure in less than one percent of boosters this is by far going to be the least of value set of the year in my opinion i think you're right um Um, universes beyond does really well yes assassin's creed a lot of people love assassin's creed yeah why why would they go the route of creating these boosters yeah i don't know we i mean opening normal play boosters for a draft or 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 limited play obviously makes sense and then of course plenty of people like to open sets or boosters just because it's fun and that's why they kind of combine the draft booster and the play booster as you know, maybe not the draft in the set booster. That, yes, thank you to yes. make the play booster. But then, and then, and then, now you're saying, okay, here's here's just another product for you to, you know, not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get. I don't get this seven card set or the seven card pack. The five, six, seven card set pack doesn't make sense to me. It re it it's giving the vibe of. We didn't have enough to draw from to create a full proper set, which I find weird because there's been enough of Assassin's Creed games and lore to have enough cards to make a complete set. Yeah, I don't think I I think also you're getting reprints of cards like Sword of Feast and Famine here. Yeah, which I believe is printed. at Is that rare? Uh, Yes. 
maybe uh, it's hard to tell on the screen and like there, there's going to be reprints of value there's a lot of thematic cards that we'll probably see some significant play at least from what we've seen we have a five color seo mm-hmm. um it, it it's it's like they it's like they held themselves back for some reason and there's no commander decks either yeah which is that I, that we, seemed like the the, the fucking thing, slam dunk right? right like that's been the thing that we've been we've been talking about for a long time is you know i get it if you don't want to participate in um in universes beyond stuff because it's not magic but that's why it was a great place for the, the commander decks were a great place for them was because you know a lot of commander stuff doesn't have to go into other set and uh, into other formats mm-hmm. um and that's, then i like i like the direct to commander deck and yeah. collector booster style so like i think a great format for universes beyond is how they did it with doctor who, how they did it with 40 K, how they're going to do it with fallout of here's your four decks. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to invest in the collector boosters and spend a lot of money, you are more than welcome to. Yeah. I'm totally cool with that. And if they're going to do a full set going full bore into it, like they did with Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Make it a thing. Assassin's Creed has enough to pull from that. They could, and they could have made it like a, a pseudo, real world historical figure set yeah i mean arabian knights as one of the most popular you know old commander sets exactly. or not commander sets just magic sets exactly um yeah i don't know that is disappointing um I, are there any cards that you want to talk about you're more the assassin's creed guy than i am i personally I do love some assassin's creed uh for me it was the uh sorry the altair card um which Altair in uh, Ibn Lahad, uh, he legendary human assassin three three first strike when he attacks, exile up to one target assassin creature from your graveyard with a memory counter on it. Then for each creature card you own an exile with a memory counter on it, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Exile those tokens at the end of combat. Uh, not necessarily because I think it'll be the most powerful or the most uh, interesting build ever, but Altair is one of my favorite characters across all of media. Um, Interesting, and that's why that's that's a perfect reason that I would want to build a commander deck around him. I think that's perfectly fair, and, and that's a fun that's a fun little build around mechanic as well. Of uh, I mean, sacrifice outlets, sending things recklessly into combat because yeah. you know you're going to be able to get them back repeatedly. Because um, it's only exiling those tokens, so the more the more times you manage to attack with him. The more times you can keep him around attacking, the yeah. more things you have in exile with memory counters, the more things he's pulling out every single turn, even if it's just temporary. Um, and I will say assassin, you know, not a, a not a vastly produced creature type, but it's one of those that will probably always be produced in uh, in one setter or, or another. Yeah, there will always be assassins. And obviously there's going to be several assassins in the Assassin's Creed deck. Oh, or yeah. in the Assassin's Creed sets. It's not even a deck. I don't know why I keep calling it that. But that'll be a fun card to build around. Um, there's a lot of really thematic cards, a lot of fun art. Um, they, even, they even brought in the Animus. Like, are we going to get some weird, like future background lore st- I always thought it was weird Assassin's Creed did that as like the through line of like oh it's the future and you're in this thing and you're projecting to the past yeah it's like that's it started out nor- like nor- the original couple of games it made a lot of sense because the story like they they put the whole story around it and at least for like a sci-fi fantasy sort of idea it was cool it kind of lost the plot after <laughs> when you know once we got to like three that's fair uh, I, I also do want to point out SEO Autor da Friends. Autor de Friends, yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, I think it's, you're adding a couple extra syllables there. It's Italian. Yeah, man. I, I mean, they make good food. They do. They got a they got a famous plumber. Like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's Mario let's, Mario. Let's call him. Let's call him Mario Mario. That's right. And <laughs> Luigi Mario. That's hilarious. Um, five color commander, one in a black for a three two with menace. Assassin spells you control have free running, black, black. You may cast a spell for its free running cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with an assassin or a commander. Whenever Ezio deals combat damage to a player, you may pay uh, white, blue, black, red, green. If that player has 10 or less life when you do, 
that player loses the game. Classic. Kind of like a kind of like an, an assassin instant kill. Yeah, kind of the. I know there's a couple of Raskas that make assassin to- one one assassin tokens that have that exact thing. Of well, not ten or less, just when you if you deal combat damage, yeah, 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 lose the game. But yeah. That's nope. a really cool card. It's a fun build around. It's five colors. Um, I was going to say, such a low drop five color commander, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's going to have a, a, a black heavy um, mana base. But there's plenty of plenty of assassins that will be able to take advantage of that free running ability. Um, that'll be really fun. That'll be a really fun card. Uh, I don't have a lot to say. Uh, this is clearly not going to be a... a Unless unless we get more of these cards revealed and they're very powerful cards that people want, yeah, uh, this set's almost assuredly not going to be worth it. Um, the starter kit might have a little bit of value, but beyond that. But we'll have to see as this uh, set comes closer to release. Lastly, we have Bloomborough. Bloomborough is like the little little fairy creatures versions of all of our our some of our magic characters that we've seen uh, it's going to pre-release on june 26th with its full release uh, right before gen con august 2nd um some fun little things everybody is a cute little critter bad guys are elementals very adorable it's going to release right before gen con so that's pre- clearly what all of the commander events around gen con are probably going to be centered around um, so you'll be able to get them there. It's going to have starter decks and commander decks, pre-release kits, play, and regular play boosters, yeah. like a normal magic set should. Collector boosters and uh, normal bundles as well. We've seen some of the cards. I very excitedly uh, sent Sam this several days ago. Uh, Bria, Riptide, Rogue, 2, Blue, Red for a 3-3 three, three Otter Rogue with prowess. Other creatures you control have prowess. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. I will be acquiring this card. Yes. And that card will be going directly into my Narset the Enlightened Exile deck. Um, I do want to have a a chat with the Wizards design team, though. Because Bria, Riptide Rogue, Prowess, other creatures you control have Prowess. We already have a better solution for this. You printed it this time last year on... Narset Enlightened Exile, yeah. where creatures you control have prowess. It really saves you a couple lines of text there. Yeah, especially with all the reminder text there. And it does note, if a creature has multiple instances of prowess, each trigger separately. Yeah. So, Narset gives everybody prowess. Riptide Rogue gives everybody prowess again. They trigger separately, which means every non-creature you cast is plus two, plus two, instead of plus one, plus one. And now when you're casting non-creatures, they become unblockable. Uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Very excited. <laughs> I, I'm. This is this is probably the regular magic set that I'm the most excited for. Yeah. Just because it seems like it's going to be a little goofy, it's going to be a little cutesy, and it's just going to be fun magic. Um, we're getting a cycle of full art lands where each land type, each basic land, is going to have four of the same art but different times of day so the mountain here we see like a waterfall and it's got a little raccoon creature with a bow and you have one where it's dusk and one where it's sunrise Mm -hmm. and one where it's midday and one where it's night but the art is the same it's just different times of day and different colors and shading and stuff that little raccoon has just been standing there for a whole day an entire day an entire day we've only seen a couple cards from it bria is one of them uh do you have any that stand out to you sam uh, well, we were talking about this one earlier, so we'll point out Mabel, Error to Crag Flame. One red, white, legendary mouse soldier, 3 3. Other mice you control get a plus one, plus one. Whenever, when Mabel, Error to Crag Flame enters the battlefield, create Crag Flame, a legendary colorless equipment artifact token with equipped creature, gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance, trample, and haste, and equip two. Um, overall, like, not that, like, nothing too exciting of a commander, but we do see that uh, mice, mouse, is going to be at least somewhat prevalent, uh, since all, of course, all creatures are going to be small and adorable. Here's we brought this up before we started the show. Mabel, heir to Crag Flame, is a mouse soldier. The text says, "Other mice you control get plus one plus one." Mice, not a creature type. Correct, but we all know it's the proper plural. Pl- 
pluralization yes of, of the word mouse so is it going to be one of those like they have to have like a little errata rules text thing specifically for this card to be like mice means mouse. includes the mouse creature type i bet we'll hear a, a lot of um dumb jokes on in in game shops and uh, and on streams where it's like uh that's a that's not a mice that's a mouse it's that's like a ah, mouse. yes, yes. We, we all know we all know so if you're listening to this don't make that joke don't be that guy yeah uh there's also only other two other cards that have been previewed so far uh lumra bellow of the woods four green green for a star star legendary elemental bear with vigilance and reach its powered toughness are each equal to the number of lands that you control um, and then when it enters the battlefield, you mill four cards, return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this is a great, uh, I would argue that this is probably a, one of the better mono green landfall commanders simply because it's not a payoff, but it is a very heavy enabler if you have a ton of fetches. Mm, yeah. You know, your, uh, what was it from the, was it the new Capenna? fetch lands where it like entered and then it would sacrifice oh, yeah, itself the, yeah that's a landfall the and then when you get another land into play that's a landfall and if you're pulling all of those back out from the graveyard that's a ton of landfalls that then go back into the graveyard and then and then and then personally i would use this as a as a win con and win con in a other landfall deck where exactly for that same reason where it's like okay so now my land, my graveyard is full of these fetch lands. Yeah, drop this, mill four cards, bring back 17 lands. And if it's like, oh, I create now 57 tokens. Oh, absolutely. They all have haste, attack. Uh, the last one I guess we'll, re- we'll go over is Burke. Long Year of the Law. <laughs> four green white, legendary rabbit soldier. Vigilance, 4-4. Four, four. When he enters the battle... When he enters... When Burke Long Year of the Law enters... Yeah. Doesn't say enters the battlefield. Nope, just, just enter. enter. He just walks in the room. Yeah. Uh, you put a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it attacks, double the number of plus one counters on it. Classic Selesnia plus one plus one counters bullshit. Gotta well, love some classic Selesnia plus one plus one counters bullshit. This is this is going to be a set that's probably not going to have any super big bombs, and it's just going to be cute and fun and have some good value. I'm sure we'll see some uh, some neat reprints, some neater reprints in this one as well. I think it lends a lot to. Um, I'm not sure what it lends a lot to. I was going to say doubling season, but we've already had like 14 reprints of that in the last seven months. Yeah, and it's still ludicrously expensive. There's also budget alternatives to doubling season that oh, yeah. do effectively the same thing, which it that's a whole that's a whole other can of worms that's a that's a tiktok and youtube short right there actually do be like that if i didn't sound like i was dying i might go over them but that is all of the magic news that we've gotten out of magicon chicago for this year uh, do you have any final thoughts before we get into questions comments concerns thoughts and or ideas from the tiktok live chat I think that is we as the year continues to go on and we see more spoilers. Um, I'll be interested to see whether the reprints, uh, especially for Modern Horizons, are going to reflect the reprints that happened in Commander Masters. I think yeah. is one of my biggest thoughts is because Commander Masters we got and we're like, oh, these are really good reprints, except for the price that you're selling packs. The people who want the reprints aren't the people who are going to be who who want to open packs to get the reprints aren't necessarily the people who need the reprints because those people are already buying those expensive cards. That is true. That is true. Oh, also, Commander Masters, for it being a master set built around Commander, also didn't reprint a lot of super valuable Commander staple cards as well. So, I mean, with Modern Horizons, it also depends on when we when we see what cards are being reprinted. Yeah. Um, in more of a full sense, we can get a better judgment on it. But the fact that we're getting the allied fetch lands, we're getting uh, direct, like new to modern bonus sheet. We're get like, I think this will be a very valuable set. Yes. For wizards, for the community, for magic. I think it's going to be pretty good. All things told. And I hope that a Johnny card's not like 30 bucks. Cause I would love to finally have my cat commander. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we will do. We'll end the podcast as we always do with questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas from the TikTok live chat. We record the Duels and Mandadorks podcast every other week live on TikTok. 
Tuesdays around noon Eastern Standard Time. The podcast then goes live the following day at 1230 Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. Every other week you can get the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, podcast services around the globe. Sam, what do you got from the TikTok live chat? Eldritch says, any di- any ideas how to spice up a goblin deck for competitive? Um, infinite I, combo. <laughs> for I mean, competitive? Infinite combo. I feel like goblins is not... It's, it's already been worked out, you know? Like, I don't feel like there's much... Unless you get we get some new bomb in an upcoming set, I feel like the spice is kind of... Make a, make a lot of them and... Swing for lethal. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what it is. Um, obviously, Krenko. All basically every version of Krenko is going to be pretty valuable. But um, Mr. Dandy DM popped in and said, "I hope you both are doing well." Yes. Thank you, Dandy. Dandy, a uh, friend of friend of the Dungeon Bros, the Dandy DM. We are doing Mr. well. Mr. Dandy DM. D Andy DM. Uh, that took a hilariously long time to realize it was D Andy. Yeah. DM. Anyway, D-Andy. it's both D Andy and D and D. Oh, so many layers. So many layers. Um, it's really layered. I was coughing. Big, big shrimp pin uh, says, can we see the screen to know what cards we're talking about? No. That's, that's an issue. That's that's something that uh, we would definitely need to work on in a future Dungeon Bros sort of. We have somebody else producing, uh, sitting over there in the, the producer spot. Yeah. That it can pull up the cards for us. That'd be really cool. Yeah, if you want, if you want that kind of, if you want that kind of stuff. That support. Yeah, you should you should download the podcast. You should go to your podcast service of choice and leave a five star review in in the text review as well because that helps with the algorithm. And then also watch the YouTube video in its entirety. Send so it basically, watch watch the podcast four times in at least two to three different spots. Yes, and we can consider doing that. Uh, tie t- you know get your friends, tie them up, and uh, uh, paste their eyes open. Is that in, in 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 a what is that Clockwork Orange style manner? Ooh yeah, yeah and yeah, have yeah. them just. I mean, it's an audio podcast, so you don't really need to tape their eyes open, uh, but you should do it anyway. That'd be funny. And tape have, their ears open. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, have them have them listen to the podcast ad nauseum. That is true. We appreciate sure. that. That's, uh, true. that's about. You can also just play it out on all of your devices at the same time at a cacophony, but yeah. all, don't play them at the exact same time. Play yeah, them like, like a second sta- or two staggered from one another, so that it's just a cacophony of madness. Yeah, much like a round that you would learn about in elementary school, yeah. like row, row, yeah. row your boat. Row, row, row. row, 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 row. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Gently down, the gently down, the gently down, the gently down, the gently. Down, the gen- <laughs> all right. Well, guys, uh, that is all from the TikTok chat. So I think it's, that's all we got. That's all we got. All right, right on. So I think it's time we um, sign off for this episode. Yep. Yeah, I've. I'm. Do you have any? Do you have anything? Any last words you would like to have for for our audience? For uh, yes, for remember you? to uh, enjoy the warm weather and that uh, putt putt is only illegal in se- in some states, not all. What? What? Yep, you heard me. What? All right. Well, no, 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 no. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. What? Anyway, thanks for thanks for listening. Um, I hope I feel better next time. That's all I got. If you're sick for two weeks, I'll suck. That was really. I'm already. I'm already almost in like a week. Get better. <laughs>